um, we uh, are finally, <laughs> happy days, left Carrick um, and we're going to Strangford Lock. It's not that bad a place. It's a great place and it's a great marina. Um, but you just... Salty Lass was getting uh, itchy feet or itchy sail drive, shall we say. I was getting itchy feet. Bev was getting itchy feet. We just needed to leave. We'd been cooped up in a marina. Is that another pot we've just missed? Yes, it was another pot we've just missed. Sorry, Beverly. I'm... You're gadding to camera instead of looking for crab pots. And you're filming me instead of looking uh, for crab, crab pots. pots. <laughs> okay, well, there's an easy way to fix this. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to be going that way, you know. We had left Carrick with our friends on Sharla, who were going back to Liverpool. We timed our departure to catch the tides through the shortcut at Copeland, and then we made our way down the coast of the Ards Peninsula. Just seven knots, so 7.1, that kind of stuff. a little bit unsettled um, we keep on thinking should we put more sail out because the wind just dies and then two seconds later you get this massive gust and you're thinking oh that reef is a good idea <laughs> and the sea seems a bit unsettled doesn't it it does the sea's a bit unsettled and um, the autopilot's having to do a little bit more work because we haven't quite got the sails balanced so um, she's weather helming at the moment. We probably should have um, a second reef in. Probably, but the thing is, when the wind dies, you need the first reef. I need the first reef, yeah. and then we're... so you just got to gauge for the. We need a reef and a half. <laughs> well, there's only the two of us, and although yes, uh, the boat ahead of us, Shaula, um their, their sail has been up and down at least twice now you know but the, we're only two of us so <laughs> yeah but they've got four and they've got racing sails yes they've got four and they're racing sails um yeah. when we were coming out of belfast lock we left at the same time um but the wind was right behind us and it was really difficult to hold a course so beverly and i decided to go for motor for the first two hours and the boys were way behind because obviously they were sailing but then as soon as we went through copeland and we were sailing oh they just they went th they right. threw their spinnaker up they threw the spinnaker up and they went past us steamed past <laughs> steamed past <laughs> And we are now seeing their transom, but at least we did they did see our transom for a bit like bit. Yeah, they had to get through Copeland before they caught us. <laughs> yes. But that is because we were under motor because That's alright, I've no pride. <laughs> no, we don't have any pride. If we it was just really difficult to and we're so rusty, honest to goodness. I just felt so rusty, didn't you, Bev? I felt extremely rusty and I still do. So what I'd rather do is have this conversation when we get to somewhere. Well, the boat that 
that's currently overtaking us is Luna, um, which is uh, one of the boats from Carrick Fergus. And um, we're just looking at his uh, speed on AIS, and um, his speed is Beverly? Quite nine knots. Nine knots, which we've reckoned is his theoretical hull speed. More or less. Um, and we are roughly our theoretical hull speed. 7.3 in our case. 7.3, so we're going at our theoretical hull speed. We've got a uh, we've reef. Got, we've got a reef in the front, a reef in the main. Uh, but we're still going at our theoretical hull speed, which you can calculate by doing... Come on, Beverly, you can do the math. Square length of the waterline length in feet at times 1.3. There you go, so it's the... Look, we're in the middle of the Irish Sea, it's bouncing around like a flipping cork out here. There's smell coming from all directions, it's raining on us, and you're asking me to do maths in my head. <laughs> but you can do it! That's not the point. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got the chart of Strangford in front of me, and more importantly, the Narrows. I'll be honest, this one's a bit retrospective. Um, because we came up the Narrows yesterday, and we realised that... You've got a bit soft being in port with all the malarkey that's gone on, virus wise and everything else. Um, I think our trip down the sea was a bit moo. <laughs> and rookie mistakes appeared everywhere. One of the rookie mistakes we made was we didn't actually mark the points of all these leading lines and put them into the chart plotter. So when we came through here, we had to do everything on compass because we had completely forgotten that we should have put waypoints in for these things. So now that we've come up the line, I've written down all the waypoints because we'll be using them to go back out again. So that's still ahead of us. And there are also a whole pile of waypoints and leading lines in here. And I have gone to the trouble of putting them on the list. So I got up my chart. I got my walking dividers and I did all my measuring with them today. And we've got those lists, so we'll be putting those into the chart plotter to make our motoring and sailing around the lock and our exit back out of it a bit less froth than what yesterday's experience was because um, with that much tidal currents and pushing us around, we basically ferry glided up the lock. We were pointing that way and going that way at several times. But, um, and the hand compass was out and the ship's compass was out. But, you know, so things like that. Rookie error. We've just been away from it too long and we've forgotten to do it. We got out of practice. Um, other rookie errors. Um, one of us forgot to duck and met the boom. <laughs> I'll not say who that was. Because some of the pillars were very difficult to see, weren't they, Beverly? Yeah, they were. And some of them have since moved. Like there was one of them which was an isolated danger mark that we were supposed to pass to starboard. It's gone. Yes, but I had updated that, and I did say to you four times, it had been updated. Okay, let's go there. They've removed it completely. I've got a mark in the chart that says there's nothing here now, but this is where it used to be. But it isn't. I put it on. Where was it then? Oh, honestly, you just... I'll no, show no, you. No, no, no. I know the mark is... Look, there's your mark. Yes. I know it's on the chart. Yeah. In reality, cruising up, there was just flat water there. Yeah, okay, well, I'll show you what it was um, sorted out I at. know what was supposed to be there, but when it's not actually there, I can't use it as a nav mark anymore. No, you can't use it as a nav mark. I can't use fresh air. No, because it's been changed to an obstruction at 21, and that 21 means it's a 21 metres um, below the water mark. It was not 21... And it's how a... does that help me navigate? <laughs> it doesn't help me navigate at all. What's the point of making here? It was. It doesn't help me navigate. It's just... If there's a big red and black thing with two knobs on top marking an obstruction, yeah, that's brilliant. I can say, oh, look, there's the isolated danger mark. We're supposed to pass on the port side of it. But now it's just an obstruction. And no. It's... No, it's flat water. Yeah. When you've got a two meter keel, a twenty meter an obstruction twenty meters down doesn't exist. <laughs> Nothing exists below the water that's more than three meters away because I can't hit it. <laughs> that's true. Other lack of practice. We're at Killylay Yacht Club um, or Killylay Sailing Club. I'm not too sure if there's a difference. Uh, but we got here and we dropped the anchor just outside the mooring field, and a very nice gentleman. Um, I'll check with the mother. He wants his name to appear on YouTube. Some people don't like it. Um, but he offered his his mirroring ball because his yacht's in the yard. And 
we very happily took it. We just steamed over um, between another couple of 37 foot yachts and we just took the marine ball and it was wonderful. So why was that a rookie error? We never thought to check the depth. What's the maximum, what's the maximum depth? What's the minimum depth at low tide? Would we rest on the bottom? Is the bottom rocky? Never thought. Oh, a marine ball. Lovely. Let's go. So Whereas previously we'd have been doing rules of twelfths in our head and we'd probably have it all sorted out before we come to the anchorage. Just sheer lack of practice. The winter plus the virus combined, we just didn't think. Just out of practice. It was a sharp lesson when we realised we'd done it and we immediately got on the depth thing and checked. And calculations show we'll have about two metres under the keel at low water, so that's good. Um, to be fair, it was a bit of a racing certainty. We've got a 37 foot yacht on one side, 30 foot, 7 foot yacht on the other. They're going to have a keel depth similar to ours, maybe even bigger. So this area is probably big enough for a boat of our size to mirror on. Um, but it's just something we should have done. It's, it's doing it properly. It's due diligence, if you want to call it that. We just didn't do it. After we had settled in, we dropped salty sausage into the water and we had a quick look around Killy Bay. Put a waypoints. Waypoints. New waypoint. New waypoint. And I put in the position of the waypoint I want. And my first one is going to be first one is going to be at 24. Oh, oh, oh. I, I picked it on the line of latitude to start. Yeah. Which is what confused me. And it's going to be 35. Whoops. 500. Oh, oh. Okay, and that is going to be. Strangford, lock, save. And so that one is now in. Okay, so I've put all the waypoints in and the thing to do now is to turn them into routes so the waypoints get joined into a common set. Now for this one, the routes of Strangford Lock are Y shaped. They go up, then they go west and they go east. So I'm going to have two, maybe three routes, but we'll see how it goes. So the one to start is the one over here going north until we meet the point where it splits. And I could then either continue that one to the west, which I think I will, because that's where we're primarily intending to go. And I'll put a separate route in for the, the easterly one. On this particular chart plotter, once we have the waypoints in, we click on routes and then we add a new route. And um, I can either create it on chart or using a route list. Strangford West, because it's the, the route up the west side of Strangford has a... Okay, so I tap on there and I'm going to do a bulk insert. No, I'm not. No, you're not. I'm just going to insert them one at a time. Okay, so I'm going to get that and I'm going to do an insert. You can see here where I've got all the ones that I've just put in. So I'm putting in Strangford Lock Start and then the next one. It's a bit tedious, but you just do it. There's not that many of them. Insert. Okay, so what I've done now is I've put the waypoints in. So I'm going to press save and I'm going to look at them on the chart and they should be where I expect them to be. So it's a cross check. Make sure that they are where I expect them to be. So let's have a look. Save. Close. And you can see here's the new route just popped in. And uh, you can see there's the start. There's this one here, which goes up opposite Brown's Rock. Mm -hmm. And then the next one goes through this gap. And I've got something wrong because it goes through an island. So there's something not right there. 
All right, so uh, it turns out I'd got um, one of them in the wrong place, and that's what it, that's all it was. So now let's look at the corrected version. So we come up to Brown's Rock, which is where it all went horribly wrong before, and it now goes up here to Strangford Split, and then Strangford Split goes all the way, clear of all rocks up to here. I'm glad to say. And there must be something just slightly adrift there. Yes, there must be because that one should be in not a, these, these should be in line. So one of these two is also wrong. Yeah. So that's something else I need to check. Mysterious. You've wanted to come here for years, so I expect you'll not forget his name. <laughs> 